Mandis, it's so, so wonderful to have you here at the Ex Forces offices. And when we first met, it was with Sojourn Honor Awards and both yourself and Jamie. Uh, absolutely, there wasn't a dry <laughs> eye in the room, but you've had a lot of, um, you know, trials and tribulations and challenges to overcome, but you've been a, an amazing inspiration in your own right for other people. And if there was one thing about the armed forces community is around resilience and adapting, just can you share a little bit about your story and uh, how you came into our, our family of uh, Sojourn on Awards and also X Forces? Um, well, from the start of it, it probably goes back to 2012 when Chris, my husband, returned from Afghanistan. Yeah. Um, throughout his tour, I'd noticed a change in him and the phone calls and the letters, and I could feel him starting to pull away from us. Right. Um, but as soon as he got back to Germany yeah. and I saw him, I knew something had changed mm -hmm. because the smile didn't reach his eyes. And he wasn't the man that right. I'd said goodbye to seven months previous. Um, from that point on for the next three years, we were walking on eggshells. Yeah. Um, I was desperately trying to help Chris, yeah. but he wouldn't admit there was a problem. Right. Um, all came to a head and we separated. Right. Um, so myself and Jamie moved back to Suffolk. Right. And then in 2016, um, we got the phone call to say that Chris had taken his own life. Right. Which Jamie was eight years old. Right. Um, so it was extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. But Jamie being the boy that he is, <laughs> um, a year later, he decided because Safra had helped us. Yes. He wanted to raise money for them. Yeah. And as he put it, stop other children going through what he had. Yeah. Um, it started off a very small community fund day. Yeah. Um, Jamie had the target two hundred pounds in mind. Mm -hmm. um, after being a bit of a superstar on the radio <laughs> and in the newspapers. <laughs> He, um, he walked away, it's just over £7,000. Oh my goodness. Now that he's yeah. raised. Yeah. Um, so from that, Safa very yeah. kindly mm -hmm. nominated him for an award. Yeah. Um, yourselves very kindly shortlisted him. <laughs> and so that's how we joined the family. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I think he made his mark at the House of Lords as well. He did, he did. I had the um, absolute privilege of both meeting yourself and Jamie and do you know the thing that is because it's it is a sad story you know but from that story to be able to somebody as young as Jamie and of course uh, Mandy that you've been through this and, and you will always be going through this this is your journey there's no other um, journeys that are similar in this sort of way so to be able to uh, share the things that you guys are doing and be such an inspiration is so important. And for somebody so young as well, taking that initiative. It's, I think the fact that at the age of nine, mm. he wanted to turn something so horrendous mm -hmm. into a way of helping others. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that that has now been recognised nationally. Yes. And by the very people that he was trying to help in the first place. Yes. It's... I mean, it was a very emotional night, but... And I want to just pick up on one point on that, actually. Um, well, loads of points, but, you know, this is probably... this We'll talk for ages. Um, I always talk about the power of the community and the fact that Safa have been such an incredible support system is really great to see and how they harnessed... And they continue. You, you do a lot with Safa. And I think Jamie still does a lot with Sapphire, is that right? He does, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, all the charities get a bit of a hard time. Yeah. But one charity cannot help every single person that needs it. Yeah. We were very, very lucky in that the caseworker, Sue, that came to see us yeah. was absolutely outstanding. Mm -hmm. And she made, during the first few weeks, she made all the difference for me because yeah. she enabled me to be strong for Jamie, Yeah. which was huge in us not getting over it but I was getting through it yeah um and since then I mean Safa have been there 
every step of the way for us mm -hmm. and they're still there for us today mm -hmm. and it, Jamie's still appearing <laughs> in numerous things for them yeah which is good yeah it's... so um I'm going to focus a little bit on your journey and then we'll talk a little bit about Jamie because I know that he's uh, you know progressing in his own little way uh as well but in terms of yourself uh Mandy the it's, it would have been a tough uh uh, situation for you and the journey around that so how have you really coped with that um I think the same as any parent would say yeah I cope because I have to mm -hmm. um, obviously some days you wake up mm -hmm. and it hits you like a brick in the face mm -hmm. um, there's there's not a day go by where I don't think about Chris mm -hmm. it's we were together nearly 12 years and I thought we would grow old together. Yeah. Um, it's it's not getting easier. I'm learning to live with it. Yeah. Um, anniversaries are still extremely hard. Mm -hmm. um, but we're getting there, and I have a new focus mm -hmm. in life now. In that, I want to help the veterans yeah. community and the serving yeah. um, community. Um, I'm I'm a very strong believer. This happened to us. Yeah. Because we're strong yeah. enough to yeah. get through it. Yeah. And uh, that's again remarkable because it's it is a case of you know it goes back to the armed forces communities, isn't it? Whereas it is a case of supporting each other. Very and much so. And that is still in the DNA, even though you know Chris isn't here. You're still part of that. That means so much to you as well. So, you know, in terms of um, friends, family, the charity sector, how do you feel that you've, you've got the support around you? Our, our support network is second to none, it really is. My parents, I have to give a shout out to them. Absolutely. Um, their support for us has never once wavered. Mm -hmm. um, whatever I put them through, and I'm sure they weren't expecting this as parents. Yeah. Um, my ex Air Force colleagues have yeah. been rallied around, especially at the time, but still now. Yeah. Um, people that Chris served with mm -hmm. sort of still check in on us mm -hmm. weekly, if not daily, some of them. Yeah. Um, and what I found now as well is on Twitter, I've yeah. been accepted into the veterans community. You are you're absolutely there. a part of the veterans and community. Yeah. Um, which is lovely because you get the banter, yeah. you get the support, sometimes I get a kick up the rear end when I need it and it's it, it's like being back in service yeah and I think when I first left the Air Force mm -hmm. I sort of I lost my way a little bit within yeah. the community yeah but definitely now I'm a big part of it <laughs> wonderful and um, uh, I know that one of my team uh, Anne who you speak to on a regular basis she contacted you after the Soldiering on Awards and, and mentioned to you a programme that we were running, which was for the widows. And that's the four widows associations, uh, RAF, Army, Navy and the war widows. That was a programme that you, you also attended? I did, yeah. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, and definitely something I would recommend to yeah. people in the same situation. Yeah. I mean, the course itself, was very enlightening and well worth doing mm -hmm. but to actually meet up with some of the other ladies yeah and it's meeting up with people that yes you've spoken to over social media mm -hmm. but to actually meet them have that face-to-face -face connection with them yes and again it just cements you being part of that community yeah and it, I mean it's from that that I learned I could be entitled to a war widow's yeah. pension that's really important actually. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? Because I think that was the connection with the War Widows that happened on the programme. You then continued that uh, relationship. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that because I think that's quite important in terms of an outcome. Um, I mean, when Chris first died, um, I had no idea what mm -hmm. I was entitled to. And being separated, I didn't actually think I was entitled to anything. Right. Um, I was put right on that by Saffa Good. and told what I could get, but the War Widows pension was, has never been mentioned to me by anyone. Right. Um, obviously, I met them at Soldiering On. Yes. Um, and it still didn't click. Yeah. 
that yeah. because Chris was no longer in service, yes. I thought that something like that was yeah. not possible. After speaking to them on the course, yeah. and they told me to apply, which I have done, mm -hmm. um, I'm still waiting, but I have applied. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Everything for us. <laughs> Um, but it's things like that that yeah. make such a difference yeah. in your life because we've, we've just bought a house mm -hmm. and it would take the pressure off yeah. immensely yeah. and also enable me maybe to look elsewhere yeah. employment wise yeah. without having the pressure of having to bring in yeah. a certain amount of money each month. Yeah, And but, I think that's quite important as well because of course, you know, is about choices and not being under pressure to make the wrong choice. Uh, and I think, you know, when we're, when we're talking about our programs and everybody thinks it's about setting up a business, it isn't. It's about understanding about all these different connections and what else can be done and how do you, where are your red lines? We talk about red lines. We, do, yeah. we love red <laughs> lines. And also what could actually be available to you. So I really do hope that the relationship there through the war widows really uh, brings brings that to a positive conclusion, really. And it, it wasn't just them. Yeah. I, mean, I was saying to Anne that yeah. everyone that was on that course, mm -hmm. I'm still in touch with via social media Great. in some way or form, which and it's a connection, mm -hmm. I think, between the group of people that can't be broken. Yeah, it, It's not a path that we would ever choose to walk. No. But if we've got to walk it, then we'll walk it together. Yeah, and that that also is, is so important. It is about being together, and you know, you, to think in and out of a, of that support system, you all get it in some different way, or there's something that you might be feeling yourself, but actually, it, somebody else can. It's about the empathy, isn't it? It is, and to a certain degree, feeling normal. Yeah, because. It's difficult for people to know how to talk to us about it. Mm -hmm. Do they mention Chris's name, which is so important. Mm -hmm. And it's, if other people mention him, then I know he's not being forgotten. Yeah. Um, but I, I go through feelings and sometimes you feel guilty yeah. for enjoying life. Yeah. Sometimes you feel like you shouldn't be moving on with mm -hmm. what we're doing. But then you talk to someone in the same situation and yeah. they've had those, those feelings. Yeah. And it, it makes you feel like, yeah, I'm not doing anything wrong. Yeah. What I'm feeling is normal. Yeah. And it, and that's huge because we, we could bury ourselves in guilt. Yeah. But something someone said to me was, we didn't die. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and they wouldn't want us to be unhappy. No. I'm sure of it. And I, and you know, it's, um, it's always this this sort of conversation is sometimes difficult because you know I, I want to de deeply and desperately say I understand what you're saying and I understand where you're at but actually it's so different for every different individual so to hear you talk about the fact that you know you're able to talk to different people about different things because it's there's one there's a different there's difference there's you know the widows who where by they you know they're a partner may have um, you know perished in a battle situation and then there's also what you've gone through there's a, still a different type of situation I don't know Mandy if I've mentioned this to you because it's still difficult for me to talk about it but I you know I've mentioned that, you know, why did we do the widows program actually I was married uh, before as well so I've, I understand it more than you think yeah. but it never goes away no, it doesn't. And, um, you know, you get to a point where I think with the armed forces, we're in a position to talk about it so much more readily and the support system is there, whereas this is one part of the support system for civilians that may not be there. So I think it's really great that what you're doing, and it's really great that you're able to talk about it, and it allows other people to be able to say, do you know what? Maybe I should talk to Mandy about what I'm going through because it's it helps you know that that virtual circle, if you will. I'm going to talk about something a little bit more positive now <laughs> <laughs> because one of the things that I absolutely know um, is that uh, through the program that you went through, uh, you've talked about you know your confidence and you've started to talk a bit more public speaking and things like that. Tell me how that's made you feel. Um. 
before going on stage, yeah. absolutely petrified. <laughs> I'm glad you. Um, but afterwards, it's there's no feeling like it. Yeah. To know that you put your story across mm. at the most dramatic time of your life, but yeah. when you look out at people and you see it affecting them. Yes. Um, so therefore, you know it's going in. What you're saying. Yeah. Is actually going in. They're not just sat there making out. They're listening to you. Yeah. And some of the comments I've had since, mm -hmm. sort of along the lines of you, you know, how do you keep going through something like that? Yeah. But, but to be given a chance to get your story out there, yeah, is is so important to me because not only do I talk about our life after mm -hmm. we lost Chris, I talk about what we went through when he was ill. Yeah. Um, which of course then makes other people see some of the signs and symptoms. Yeah. And also what I found, as soon as you mentioned Jay and his age, yeah. it makes men think yeah. and they think about their own family environment. Yes. And we've, we've had a lot of messages about mm -hmm. people saying because they've heard us, mm -hmm. they've then gone off and got help. Yeah. So if, if we're saving lives, yes. then I will tell my story as much as it needs to be told. Thank you, thank you for that. So let's talk a bit about Jamie. And um, how is he? Um, he's a typical eleven-year-old, <laughs> cheeky and on the Xbox. <laughs> um, he's he's doing fantastically well. He started high school in September. Yeah. Um, which was a big jump for him. Yeah. But he's. I know his dad would be proud of him. It's every day it makes me proud. Yeah. But. We're very proud of him. <laughs> I know you're very proud of him. Very proud of him. <laughs> and uh, he he actually did this video as well, didn't he? he did. And yeah. uh, uh, how how was how did was how did that actually feel? How you guys must have sat and spoken about it. You know, it's actually it's gone quite viral, to be honest. So tell me a little bit about how that process. Uh, came about. Um, I mean that came from Soldier and Honor Awards as well. Right. Because Rupert, who did your photography, yes, then contacted me. Um, he's now in the Army Media team. He is. He is. Um, Good old Rupert. <laughs> God love him. Yes. Um, so he contacted me and asked if Jamie would be willing. Yeah. To take part in the video. Yeah. Um, I sat Jamie down. Um, as soon as I mentioned Rupert's name, he said yes. <laughs> which, <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> which is always a good start. Yeah. Um, Jamie's taken a little bit of a backseat yeah. from the public eye, which yeah. is completely his choice. Yeah. Um, and one that I will always go along with. Yeah. Um, but he actually said to me, it's going to help other people. Yeah. So yes, I'll do it. Yeah. Um, Rupert came down. Uh, they had great fun together playing football and mm -hmm. all sorts of things. But when oh, it, great. <laughs> that's good to know as well. That's so Rupert. <laughs> that is so Rupert. It's like the same mental age going on yeah. um, But actually doing the interview, I mean I I found it quite emotional myself doing yeah. my part. Um and Jamie actually walked out of the kitchen. Yeah. Which it's probably easier to talk without him. Yeah. Sort of stood looking at me. Yeah. Um but obviously when it came to Jamie's part, which was so emotional. Absolutely. Um we did actually have to take a 10 minute break which yeah. and he was given the choice again if right. you want to stop yeah then that's the end of the filming but he was determined yeah he was going to see it through yeah and he was absolutely thrilled yeah. with the final video and probably more thrilled with how it went viral yeah <laughs> which is so important at the age of 11 <laughs> but um i mean he, he's very proud to have done it and yeah. it's because his school then got to find out, because this was one of the considerations that you had, Mandy, about, well, actually, how public do you want to be, Jamie? And is this something that it's important to you for other families? Or, you know, is it going to get compartmentalised? What, how do you want to play that? But then his school got behind it as well. They, they did. Um, Jamie, I mean, Jamie had a quite a bad time at primary school mm -hmm. after being in the public eye. Right. Um, so that that was my concern being yeah. at high school if this goes national yeah are we then going to go through the same problems um but he actually went into school the day it's released right. spoke to his english teacher yeah said that he'd done it 
who then proceeded to Google it and right. show it to the class. Um, <laughs> well, and now I've got uh, butterflies already yeah, thinking about it. Um, and the way his form group yeah. sort of acted towards him after that yeah. for a group of 11 and 12 year olds was absolutely amazing. Yeah. And it's, and he's so lucky to be in such a supportive network within the school. Yeah. I mean, the, the English teacher gave him four points <laughs> for behaviour because he'd done it. Yeah. Um, but I see it all the time now. He's so grown up. He's got his Instagram account. Okay. Um, and like with Remembrance Weekend, he put on a photo of him with his dad. Right. And just saying, hope you're watching over me. Things along those lines. And all the comments came from kids in his form. Yeah. Just saying, we're always here. We're so proud of you. And it's... It's, so, it's such a lovely story um, and it's lovely that, you know, you, we hear stories about social media and it's not so great sometimes and all that sort of stuff. To be able to hear something so positive around this situation for an 11 year old or to, that is great to know it's, that that is there and it's out there. It, it's huge. I mean. Before he, I think he felt a little bit guilty because he won the award. He was in the public eye, yes, and he was made to feel that way yeah. by the general reaction of certain people around him. But now, because everyone's been so supportive, mm -hmm. he's a bit more. Yeah, I can talk about this. People yeah. aren't going to take the Mickey out of me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get a hard time because yeah. I get up, and he does get upset. Um, yeah. I know. Last Friday was the anniversary of Chris's yeah. death. And again, he formed, he informed his form tutor it was going to be the anniversary and she took him to one side on the morning. Are you okay? So they had a good chat. All these teachers knew what it was. Yeah. And to have, we're very, very lucky with the school. Because well, we won't mention the school no. and we won't mention the teacher. However, a little shout out for teachers who are that in tune and that considerate is such it's, it's such a testament it is and it's huge because it it helps him exactly I, I can only help him so much yeah for him to say that see that other people that are outsiders as such yeah. to our situation and to know that they're compassionate exactly that. just makes a huge difference exactly that so I also know <laughs> that you've got some sort of uh, SAFA ball, is that right? Or a charity ball, something like that, that's going on? Yeah, next Mar March 14th next year, um, I'm, I'm organising a ball in aid of SAFA. <laughs> it's, I thought if Jamie's done his bit, I need to <laughs> go and say thank you. Yeah. Um, so tickets are on sale now. Are they? Yeah, great. Right. They are. On a Fantastic. Dinosaur. Great. Um, so, so that's the 14th of March. Yeah. It's a fundraiser that you're organising for SAFA. Yes. And where is it? It's at Hungarian Hall, which yeah. is in Woodbridge, just outside Ipswich. Right. Um, there are numerous hotels yeah. around the surrounding area. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a fantastic night. Yeah. It's, we've got a live band. Um, when they finish, we've got DJ. Yeah. On arrival, you've got someone playing the piano. Yeah. Uh, we've got a close-up magician. Oh, wow, cool. Um, someone that does, I can never say the word, but somebody does the cartoons of your face. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got a normal raffle going. Yeah. And there will be a silent auction. Great. And um, we're hoping to fit in some games as well. Excellent. Which, and, of course, there will be a buffet. Right. Um, and what age, at what sort of age groups are you going for on this? Um, going for the older yeah. age group. Right, it's, so Jamie's not going to be there? Jamie's not going to okay. be there. Okay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think after the soldiering on when he was exhausted by a telecom, <laughs> he was. Granddad had to take him upstairs. <laughs> and, and what did he have? Some room service, or did he have his supper downstairs? He so had his supper downstairs. Oh, that's good. And most of mine. <laughs> oh, okay. So he enjoyed the food. Um, but yeah, so I, I think it would be too much for him as well. Yeah, understood. It's although a lot of people seem to think he's going to be there. Which yeah. I haven't. This is my chance to break it to them that he's not. <laughs> Um, but it, it's going to be a fantastic night and yeah. hopefully raise lots of money for a fantastic Absolutely. charity. Absolutely. And we will help to do our bit in terms of 
either supporting it in some way, being there, or or at least um, potentially even getting a few tickets. And, and it would be lovely uh, to have you there. Well, that would be amazing. I'll be, I'll be talking there as well, so I'll right. tell a little bit of our story. Yes. Obviously, yeah. I don't want to go on too long. I think it's important, though, Mandy, that you feel as comfortable as you feel about talking about it, and it does inspire, and you are an inspiration as is Jamie and you know I think for young people as well as our age group to be able to be that open is 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 so important it is so. and it's hard even our age as we said at the start mm. um, but it's so important to talk yeah whether you're talking about what we've been through or you're talking about the fact that you're struggling yeah um, I know more and more people are starting to come forward to now and yeah. say that they are having problems yeah but there's still the stigma attached to mental health yeah and i i honestly believe until that stigma is gone yeah we are going to continue to lose people to suicide yeah which and all it takes is for someone to listen we don't yeah. even need to talk to these people we just need to listen that's yeah. what they need yeah um I, I put it on social media all the time that i've got strong shoulders and i've always got an ear yeah and anyone that wants and it's to talk I agree with you in the sense that I think, you know, we're trying to remove that stigma. There's a lot around that, around men mental health and wellness full stop. But listening is the key. It, it's not necessarily what you're saying back. It's actually being able to have that um, platform where you can actually talk to somebody. Definitely. And it's listening to the silent words yeah. as, as well yeah. as what they actually say. And as people say, ask twice. I mean... If someone asks me if I'm okay, then I'll put on, put on a smile and say yes. Yeah. And sometimes if they ask again, then yeah. they actually get past yeah. that yeah. sort of farce that I'm putting on. Yeah. But, but it's so much work is going on Yeah. around removing the stigma. And it, it's not going to be a quick journey. No. Um, but as long as people know that there are people out there willing to listen to them mm -hmm. there are so many charities mm -hmm. that if they make contact with them they will do all they can to help them yeah and it's it's an horrendous thing to go through yeah sort of losing someone to suicide and we need it's it's not just the person losing their life that it sort of affects it affects that wider community yeah and it's i know friends of chris's that feel guilty that they didn't speak to him in yeah. that last week yeah. And it's, so it's, that's what we need to think about. Exactly. I think, you know, um, what would you, uh, what, what would you, what would you be your piece of advice? Um, listening is clearly one of those. Giving time is another one. And asking, are you okay? But asking, twice. not that, just are you okay or how are you but asking that twice i think that's uh, you know i've not heard about that before but that makes sense don't just ask once but what would you other what else would you say in terms of you know if somebody's in a bit of a dark place how would how would you um, i mean i said it on the video that yeah that there is nothing that bad mm -hmm. that means that suicide is the only way out yeah it's everything can be fixed yeah whatever situation you've got yourself into whether it's financial marital yeah nothing and i mean nothing at all is ever worth taking your own life over yeah um it takes such a strong person mm -hmm. to admit that you're struggling yeah and an even stronger person to pick up the phone and ask yeah. for help mm -hmm. and there is no weakness involved Mm -hmm. in anything around that Mandy I don't know if this is putting you on the spot a, a little bit but you know we we know of the some of the support systems that are out there and you know we're it's clearly with as a society we're trying to get better at talking about mental well-being and uh, mental health but if there was something that could be put into place that you think isn't already in place is that have you, is that something that sort of crossed your mind? I mean, we've got things like helplines, we've got uh, talking groups. What else could we do that would make a difference? I think something run by veterans yeah. for 
the forces community. I, I know myself that yeah. to talk to another veteran mm -hmm. is so much easier yeah. than to talk to a civilian. Yeah. Um, we've all been through deployments, but we all know what each other has seen. Yeah. And I think, obviously, the government have tried to do it with the Veterans Office. Yeah. But it, we need something in place where you've got junior, ex junior ranks, yeah. ex senior ranks, mm -hmm. and where we people can go out and visit these people in the in their houses where yeah. they feel comfortable yeah we don't all feel comfortable picking up the phone and talking to some uh, s somebody who is ne not necessary it's just a voice not yeah. it's not a face and you can't yeah. make that connection yeah. with someone yeah. yeah but i think if if we had something obviously it's it's a huge thing to be able to do because the country is huge yeah but if we had some people that could go out and visit people where they feel comfortable, they can make a connection with people. Yeah. It doesn't just have to be one visit, they can visit as much as that person needs. Yeah. But you need you need to be able to see that person that you're talking to. Yeah. And it, it's the same when you go to I don't know, a psychologist. If you don't make a connection with someone, yeah. then you're not gonna talk. Exactly that. And this is so important that the people that are struggling, if yeah. if they put up their hand and said, Right, I need help. Yeah then we need to be there and support them. Yeah. There's too many people that are asking for help and they're being rebuffed. Yeah. Or the environment just isn't the right environment, whether that's because it's just a call or it's you've got to go to somewhere. And I suppose the hardest thing in this sort of situation is being able to recognise you need help because that's the, you know, that, that's the um, uh, tough thing about being in that sort of space, I would imagine, is actually being in strong enough to say I want some help and then having to go and not get a, the connection yeah would obviously I think that's what we're trying to say here is it, it doesn't make the impact that it should no it doesn't at yeah. all so I think that's a bit of a call out I know so you know hopefully this uh, is going to go viral and the purpose of this is not just to, you know for us to be talk, able to talk about what we've done because I think that's still very very important but it's about what can be done yeah. and the future uh, so I think you know a call out for that would be absolutely amazing I also want to concentrate a little bit about you as well Mandy so what could the community or what could we if we had a little magic wand I'd like this magic wand. I actually think I've got one, but it's really the power of that. Uh, but if we could do anything that would make you to get, get to the next stage or support your environment, James' environment, what could that look like? Um, I, th I think for me, yeah. um, I, my, my passion now lays mm. within the veterans community. Yeah. Um, I would love more than anything to work yeah. within the veterans community yeah and i think mainly for me and most importantly for me i would like to be given the chance for my public speaking wonderful it's just one person to let me do it yeah and then it can grow from there right which excellent okay well a couple of things here because there will be some amazing people who will have listened to that and may come forward to help with some support around uh, mentoring or coaching around public speaking I, I and I know a peop few people I'm gonna I can bring but I think it would be nice to, to get some of that across here I had the privilege and it is a privilege to sit and just chat with you for five minutes before uh, when you first came in and, and, and had a coffee and one of the things I spoke to you about was you know would you uh, be our guest and come back to the Sojourn Eye Awards on the 24th of April. And you said? I would absolutely love to. Well, we've got then the 24th of April to start to think about getting you to hone some of that stuff and see if you can, uh, if you wanted to, to say a few words at some point at Sojourn on, on the April the 24th, 2020. Well, yeah, <laughs> that would be an honour. Well, it will be an honour for us it's... as well. So it gives us something, let's try and get you some uh, support on the public speaking side, let's get you a platform, we can do that bit. And anything that we can do to support and encourage or just be there to listen, yeah. and sometimes just say, are you okay? Yes. Or are you okay? <laughs> 
that would be amazing. You are just amazing, so thank you so, so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to say whilst you've got uh, access to the wide world? <laughs> um, all I can say is, is just to reach out. It's, none of you in our community are alone. Um, that's been proven to me over the last three years. Reach out. If, if you need want to talk to me, then do it. But there is someone out there that will listen to you. But thank you. Now, one thing I don't know if you know this. I know I I told. Uh, so when I went to, how I got to know about the widows is that um, Barney from ABF is on the is a trustee for the Army uh, Widows Association, okay. and he bounced because I need to speak to you, and bounced in my office that other office that we had over there. And he said, Ren, would you be, I've got some good news and some bad news. And I said, uh, and he goes, um, I'll give you the good news first. And asked me whether I'd go and do a keynote speech with the army widows. Mm. And, and I said, absolutely, 100%, no hesitation. He said, the bad news is on a Saturday. And I said, well, actually, that's not bad news for me because I know I'll be available, <laughs> you know. So, so I went and did that. And uh, one of the things that's very difficult for me to speak about, actually, Mandy, and uh, I wanted to share with you, I don't know if you know this, because I did share it with the first Widows cohort, but I mentioned it very briefly and then stopped again, which mm. is an interesting bit, but it's fine. Um, but I was married previously, yeah. so I was, this is my third marriage actually, but I was married um, and, and Peter committed suicide. Um, and uh, yeah. And that was in 2007. So, yeah, I um, just need to make sure I don't start. Because if you start, I'll start. <laughs> uh, so, um, so, yeah, so that is, and I didn't have a support system. Mm. Um, and that's why I really wanted you to bring that out. Because yeah. for a civilian, I think it was it's a lot, it, well, for my case, it was a lot worse. Because there was no widows association. There was nobody I could go and talk to about this so I didn't yeah and I remembered the darkest moment that I had and uh, I was trying to work at the same time and it was an overnight I'm just sharing this now and then I'll stop and it was an overnight uh, gig um, so I had to stay at the Marriott Hotel and I can't even tell you where about the country it was but it was winter and I literally was on I was literally on my knees and I said I can't do this anymore shit mm. anyway mm. And, and that was it was do or die at that point mm. is either i was going to come out of that yeah. or i was not going to come out of that you, you definitely need to have that moment though and i've had that moment yeah and luckily for me i had jay yeah because i yeah i had to and you know yeah. and i was probably the same as you i hid from him yeah. my tears for the first six months yeah until i noticed he wasn't crying yeah. And he said to me that it will upset you if I cry. Yeah. And from that moment on, even when we're watching Chris's favourite film, yeah. I mean, Jay would sit there in laughter and I'd sit there sobbing. Yeah. And it's, yeah. but now that he's seen that, and it's bringing it onto that future generation, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But see, now he, he will cry and he'll cry yeah. in front of his mates. Yeah. And, and that's so powerful um, because, you know, we need to be able to, this is, this is, this is the real me yeah. there's only one real me and it's the real me yeah and sometimes if we're if we, you know from what am i speaking from my own experience now but when uh it's a case of you feel you've got to put on the poker face yeah. that's not the real you exactly and if you're not careful you're going to lose the real you because the poker face just ends up you know you don't know do you know what i mean but it's so, yeah and it's a dilemma isn't it because Coming out of our marriage, even though we weren't divorced, we were separated. Yeah. And for 18 months, I used that time to grieve my marriage. Yeah. And to find me again. Yeah. And to be that person I used to be. Because yeah. you do change in marriage, don't you? Yeah. And then, of course, well, that, was the, that was that was the, that was the catalyst as well. Because yeah. we were sp uh, splitting up. And the last conversation I had with Peter was on a Tuesday. I know that Anne knows this. was on a Tuesday. And then I went out... Uh, I was working away and I came back and on the Friday he wasn't here 
and you go through, you know, could I have done what things, ifs, what ifs, and, very much so, uh, and stuff. Right, okay, let's get back on track, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> Sorry, but I wanted Absolutely to share with you yeah, that no, when I say, so you do know what I'm I, going for, yes, so. yeah, and and you know what, uh, but you it's haven't so, said that to very many people, have no, you? I haven't, and I know what you're thinking of, for, so thank you. Thanks. So thank I'm you. always here for you with an if, and mm -hmm. you know what, it's. I would like you to be on my table at, on the 24th of April. Is it free, Warren? Uh, it's, free, it's a free ticket for you, so everything's I, I, I can't. If they say what my behaviour would be like, I've got <laughs> free wine. <laughs> I might share with you. I might share you with Anne. In which case. <laughs> it's, I'll be on my best behaviour. No. Is John no. Nicole going? Yes. Yeah, I'll be on my best behaviour. He's uh, like my hero. Is he? Yeah. Okay, we'll put him you on, you on him on the same oh, table. You won't have an ear left, or like that. <laughs> that might actually be quite good fun. So, uh, all right, let's... Uh, I've actually lost where I am. The book. The book. The book. The book. The book. And then, <sighs> let me just compare us as well. And there was some, um, I don't know, did you manage to speak to John Ellis at all? Sorry, Mr. Pickle Nose. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so, do you know what? I call him Mr. His name's John Bennett. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So, are we good? Hmm. Mandy, there's something else I want to talk to you about. And um, a little bird told me that actually one of the things or one of your ambitions is also to write a book and to publish that, self-publish or, and, and tell me a little bit about that because are you, is that an uh, aspiration? Have you started, have you, are you thinking about it? Where are you in that journey? Um, I've started. Um, I think I'm about 22,000 words in. Oh, wow. That started. Um, definitely started. Um, there's ob obviously a lot more to do. Um, I haven't done anything on it for a while because things have been so busy. Um, and obviously more things have happened in our journey. Mm -hmm. um, but it starts from the moment we lost Chris. Right. Um, and shows our journey. Yeah. And how we've come through it ourselves yeah and how we've managed to stay strong mainly talked about jamie and all his achievements yeah and basically that if an 11 year old can do it yeah we, we've all got it in us to do it um and it, it it's very personal of course um there's an awful lot about our private lives which i don't mm -hmm. normally share yeah um but i think it's so important for well, I hope it's important for people to read something like that mm -hmm. and to see that it is possible yeah. to move on with your lives. Um, there is a little bit in there, in the introduction to it, about some of the behaviours that Chris was showing. Yeah. Um, and it was exactly those behaviours that caused us to separate, even though I loved yeah. him with all of my heart. Yeah. Um, but I hope that people will read it absolutely and and to a certain degree enjoy it yeah but to see the message in there do you need any help with it where where, where are you at so and I, when i say do you need some help with it you know the writing and the things that will be coming out that's oozing out of you that is that's what you're doing or is there anything that you need that will help with the process of of the book where you are at right now um well, Anne has put me in touch with someone. Yeah, Mr. Pinkle knows. <laughs> He's one of our beneficiaries from Blind Veterans. And he tell, has been telling this uh, story. His actual real name is John Bennett. <laughs> but we all call him Mr. Pinkle knows. So uh, Anne's put you in touch with John. Yeah, I've got your phone number. I haven't actually brought up the courage to phone him yet, but I will do. Um, so I know he's self-published. Yes. Um, I'm probably a long way off getting to that point obviously need to finish it then i need someone to read through it yeah and sort of move things around a little bit yeah but and i think having read back through some of what i've written i need to mm -hmm. go a bit more in depth yeah i've held off a bit yeah and i think that if i am going to put something like this out there yeah then it needs to be all or nothing yeah um and so, it's very good therapy for me absolutely they do say that writing a book is very cathartic and actually it brings part so I've been to I've I, when I retire when I find some time I'd love to write a book 
but here's a bit of a call out. So Mr. Pinkle knows, John Bennett, he already knows that you're going to be ringing. So hopefully that's taken it a little bit of that, um, you know, plucking up the courage. Yeah. He, he knows that you'll be calling. But if there is anybody out there as well that can share some of the ideas and also has written before um, and can support Mandy along this journey, that would be great. I don't know if Martin mentioned to you, but um, his daughter, uh, my stepdaughter, uh, Rachel, she's herself, she's an author as well. She's published three books now. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, she's not writing at the moment. She's now a teacher. But uh, Rachel might be able to give you some, uh, also some support about how she went about that journey. I don't know if that is uh, useful for you, but it's certainly, yeah. and it's in the family. So, you yeah. know. I'm, I know that Rachel will be delighted to talk to you about it. But if we can find somebody that's, and you know, can do a bit of knowledge exchange and a little bit more ongoing support, I'm pretty sure that they would want to do that. So that's an, a, a bit of a call out, please, as well. Now I've got another question to ask you, and this one is um, one that I think is quite, uh, you know, quite personal to you, which is. If you could have done anything differently in your journey and and uh, where you, from where you are to where you are now, where you were and where you are now, what would that is? Uh, um, what would you say to that? Well, that do you mean before Chris? Any of it? Yeah. Um, I mean before we lost Chris, mm. I sent him a text mm. in the August mm -hmm. um, because. I last actually saw him face to face in the February of 2016. Right. Um, and we had a really, really long chat, really good chat, and he promised me that he was going to get help. Right. Um, we'd still heard nothing from him, so I texted him in the August and asked how that was going. Yeah. And was it working for him? Um, and he sent me a text back saying that somebody very close to him had told him he would look weak if he asked for help. Now, all he got back from me was not a loving text, but yeah. just saying to him, I, I told him basically he needed to see where his priorities were and to yeah. listen to the people yeah. that actually had his best interests at heart. Um, I never got anything back from him after mm -hmm. that. I, My one regret about Chris is I wish I'd phoned him that day. Yeah. And I think if he'd heard my voice and sort of me pleading with him to get help for, for Jamie's sake as well as his own, mm -hmm. maybe he would have gone off and got help. Yeah. Um, the problem I saw with that was that he was only taking one person's advice and nothing would steer him away from that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, with the days leading up to his suicide, I wish he'd reached out to me. Yeah. It's, he knew that I still loved him. Yeah. He knew that I would do anything to help him. Yeah. Um, but hindsight yeah. is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Um, after his suicide, it's there's not a lot of things I would change because mm -hmm. I think our journey has progressed in the way that it should do. Mm -hmm. um, what I would change is for the first six months or so after his suicide, I didn't cry in front of Jamie. Yeah. I didn't want to want him to see mummy breaking down. Mm -hmm. um, that changed when I realised Jamie was no longer crying. Yeah. And he actually turned to me and said, well, I don't want to upset you, Mum. Mm -hmm. So now we cry together. And, <laughs> Bless you. Um, mainly during his senders. <laughs> um, but, and now he knows yeah. that crying, again, is not a weakness. Mm -hmm. It's just a show of emotion. And we all get emotional. Yeah. As long as we don't stay there. Yeah. It's, but apart from... I just, I just, you know, um, and tell me, Mandy, I know you would if, if I've got this wrong, but I think this goes back to no two journeys are ever going to be the same. And you, we can always talk about what we could have done and what we, we, you know, what we could have done differently. But I think as one thing that you've said to me previously is just be true to yourself. And yeah. if you, if you can, that's the best you know um that you can be and i know we both spoke about the poker face but also um you know making sure that 
actually we're just being open as much as we can so that yeah. we can let stuff in as well and I think you know you demonstrate that um, for a lot of people in terms of you can just be yourself yeah now you know I'm going to part, uh, part on one of the other statements that you made which is ask for help and when you ask is somebody okay don't just ask them once because actually it's about the sincerity of sometimes we just say yeah are you how are you and they say i'm very well because that's what somebody else wants to do they really want to know the real answer but i think we more and more of us are starting to get to that point where actually that support system is really there for them just to add in actually yeah. to the what we would do differently obviously myself and chris separated yeah. um I, I always feel a little bit of guilt mm -hmm. that I not walked away because I kept in contact with him. But the important thing to remember about that is after three years of living on eggshells, um, being mentally and verbally attacked mm -hmm. to the point that you start to believe what's being said to you. Yeah. Um, I had Jamie to think about and I also had my own mental health to think about Yeah. because Although I've been low since we lost Chris, previous to us separating, I was probably at the lowest point I could have gone to. And although Chris was ill, so maybe what was coming out of his mouth wasn't mm -hmm. how he felt, mm -hmm. but each day he was digging away at me and digging away. Mm -hmm. And for me to be able to bring Jamie up, I had to be strong. Yeah. And I wasn't strong there and I would believe in every single thing he said or did to me and so that's important as well we all love the man that we're married to yeah or the white woman that we're married to um but you have to look after number one as well yeah. and we can support them from outside that marriage mm -hmm. you don't have to be there yeah to be able to or for them to know that you support them yeah that is uh, really quite sage and quite profound as well you know to be able to support somebody else you need to know that you also are strong enough to be able to do that and yeah so thank you yeah. and you know we're going to do lots of stuff and we're going to absolutely do loads of stuff and support as much as we can as well for you but also thank you mandy for the support just by doing things like this that you've given to others because that is the true inspiration you know Thank you.